What's up guys, Mojo here. So today we're in the backyard with PJ. Um, for those of you guys who haven't met PJ, I'll let him introduce himself real quick. Hi, um, I'm PJ. Um, I, I work with Mojo here uh, at our department. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I, got, I got to babysit him. Um, but yeah, I've been, been working uh, with you for about, what, like well, close to almost, a, almost year a year now. Yeah, almost a year yeah, now. Yeah, and uh, I'm originally from Denver. I worked there as a cop for about seven years and uh, just moved here with family and uh, now I'm here. Okay, awesome. Well, welcome PJ to the channel once again because you know, you've seen him in the cold starts. You've seen him in, uh, I think you were, what was it? The cold start of February? February is one that you were with yeah. us on where he introduced us to the different types of ways of clear malfunctions, which was freaking badass. So today we're making this video to talk about what gear we're wearing on patrol. As cops, uh, kind of work it from head to toe so without further delay. I guess for the most part, we'll start with our vests. So PJ, what vest are you carrying? Um, so this is an Armor Express. That's right, Armor Express that my department issued me. I'm used to wearing the uh, the Angel Armor yep. um, carrier. I, I hand both the, the outer carrier and the inner carrier, and I usually rock it with the outer. I like that system. Yep. Um, how, however, it was a little bit too bulky, a little bit heavy, so kind of cumbersome. But I did like the system that they had. They had this like elastic with the loop and notch thing. So uh, I know no, you're about. So no Velcro, no zippers, stuff like that. So pretty efficient when it comes to that, but I, I found that this is the more comfortable and lightweight mm -hmm. one. Um, I, I'm, I believe this is a 3A. As you can see, I have a, a radio pouch over here. This is just like a cheap Amazon radio pouch, so nothing fancy there. Oh my God, it's not name brand gear. Yeah, so oh, it's just, just some random stuff. Um, a mount for my body cam. This is uh, an Axon Molly attachment. A little D-ring for my uh, remote fob. Two pens, obviously you need pens for police work. <laughs> pens. Um, this is an Endora mic that you gave me. Yep. And I, I really like this thing because the transmission comes over the radio really, really clear. Oh yeah. And I like the big push talk button over here. Very, very useful. Um, again, no no name brand mag pouch. I think, what is it called? It's from Amazon. Top tack, yeah, it's an Amazon piece Amazon. for my extra mag. And a flashlight mount for my mod light. Uh, some shears for medical stuff and a backup flashlight. And I think that's pretty much it as far as my carrier goes. If there's anything on that that you could change right now, what would it be? Um, you know, I think I talked about this before um, with you in the past, but I, I wish I had bigger pockets. Bigger pockets. Um, it's, it's not a huge deal because, you know, like we clearly we have pockets all over our freaking yep. pants and shirts and whatnot, but I'm, I'm used to having like big, big giant pockets for my notepad. Right. Right. So now to combat that, I, I have pockets on my sleeves. Oh, on the sleeves on the yep. shirt or in the pants, yeah, whatever the case but it, it would just be nice to have pockets that are a little bit bigger because this one's a little cumbersome, kind of hard to get to, but I can keep cards and Miranda Wright stuff, you know, so it's useful. But yeah, bigger pockets for sure. For me, I have a Velocity Systems L-Pack. So I've uh, worn an L-Pack at my first agency back in like 2018, 2019. So it was one of the first carriers I ever rocked. Um, the industry standard is kind of the uh, the Bothell 2.0s, the Oregon City Carriers, which it's like, it hugs you 360 degrees, zipper in the front, overlapping. Um, it's more uniform-esque. Yeah, more uniform-esque. Yeah. And then obviously like your your standard state trooper stuff, your, inside, your armor inside of the shirt. Uh, this is kind of uh, habitually stepping the line in terms of like a plate carrier versus like a patrol vest. But um, it adds, it has comfort. There's a lot of reasons why I like it and we'll kind of get into those here. So um, rocking an Endura mic as well. So this one, is is awesome because I can unplug the bottom portion here and plug in a push, push to talk or put, plug in a headset for like my helmet and stuff like that. I don't have that, just yeah. letting you guys know. Yeah, his this doesn't have that. Version. This one has that. Programmable buttons on that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I have a, one of these little micro earpieces. I don't know who makes it exactly, I forgot. It's from Calm Gear Supply. These things are super tiny. Um, when they sit in your ear, you don't realize they're in there. That's why I like them so much. Um, obviously patch panel, spare handcuff key. Uh, we are rocking Kenwood radios. I got that one right here on the left-hand side, looped in with a um, CAA antennas. Uh, so this is a relocating antennas. So I don't have the big, the big dongle kind of sticking up so I can kind of route that antenna through the vest and it pops out on this side and I kind of just hide this mic right, or kind of hide the antenna right there. And it's been awesome. I know PJ runs the same thing. So they've been awesome for uh, certain rural areas that we've been kind of operating in and then we can still get out to the repeaters for our, our dispatch tiers, which has been quite awesome. Uh, obviously here, so we have the Axon Body 3s. Uh, they work, They're, it's a body camera, it is what it is. Uh, then I have here on this side a uh, 
09 Kydex for the key fob holder for my vest. Uh, the cummerbunds that I'm currently using right now are from Defense Mechanisms. Uh, the same thing that's are in is in my out my other plate here that I have as well too. Then if you guys will notice here or the way the pouches are set up, it's set up the exact same way as my Ranger Green carrier that I have um, in the trunk of my car, which I'll kind of um, I didn't bring it. It's right now. It's literally sitting in the trunk of my patrol car. Don't want to grab it, but I'll get some B-roll for you guys so you guys can see how that plate carrier set up. It's just it's a plate carrier that I usually wear on the range. Um, so that's my secondary carrier that sits in the car if need be and if I need to have it for whatever the case may be. Um, and then obviously, so from your guys' left to right here, handcuffs from HSGI, STAC uh, mag carrier, so that's the magnetic one. I could shove a 2011 mag in here, Glock magazine, doesn't matter. Um, mod light in a defense mechanisms pouch, uh, freaking PMAG with uh, G9 defense, barrier blind, 54 grain ammunition, 5.56 obviously in a defense mechanisms pouch again a small little cloud defensive light, which is super, super cool. That thing is um, very effective for what it is. A lot of, uh, uh, for me, I kind of just started carrying that light in here. I've been ending that white a lot, some white light a lot, so I'm probably gonna be moving that. And then a uh, multi-cam little dangler pouch I have right here. Also, another dangler pouch on the side. Uh, phones can go in there. You could shove um, notepads, pens, whatever you want, but these are just extra pouches just in case if I need to put something there. Yeah, uh, pouch. Yeah, the uh, pouch, <laughs> as you guys know. And then right here, Carrie, um, I forgot who makes these, those little tiny trinkets we got. Oh man, yeah, I forgot too. I'll they're, probably, they're cool, they're yeah, super cool. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. I carry, carry them on the guns and we also carry that in the vest. Then inside the vest, I also have some trauma shears, pens, some latex gloves, and then I have also some small minute stuff here as well. Um, and that pretty much covers the plate carrier itself, or the, the vest itself. I don't wanna say plate carrier, someone might get mad at me. So with this being said, um, the, I mean, Shit, this is like one of the most important pieces of equipment that we have. It's yeah. it's very important that I feel that it's it's comfortable and it's something that you don't mind wearing for 10, 12 hour shifts. Like the longest I've worn this is over 18 hours. Yeah. On a shift. And that was right when I right when, right when I came back from or right before I left for Shot Show. You yeah. remember what okay. happened. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. so like I that, that day I was at work, I was some stuff happened and I was at work for a very, 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 very long time. And um, again, it's it's small things, right? Obviously we're we're kind of the gear dudes at work. We, yeah. we buy the gear, we spend money on the gear, but for good reason. So um, I think that the, the armor portion, the part that you're carrying on your shoulder and then that's actually in charge with your protection is probably one of the more important things to okay. like invest money in, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, the last thing I forgot to cover, um, I'm wearing Safari Land um, armor. I forgot which kind of armor it is, but super light, super awesome. Have no problems with that one. So, Anything you would change? Um, oof. Honestly? Change it to multicam black. I mean, I would wear multicam black, <laughs> as, you, as you can tell. Yeah. But right now, uh, no, I, I honestly, I am very happy with the way this vest is set up. Cool. I have no complaints. Um, it's it's comfortable, man. Like Looks this, good. Yeah, yeah. The, the, what I like is, yeah, this the, the chic design here. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly love soft armor carriers for shouldering a rifle because mm -hmm. you don't have to fight the plate when you put the butt sock of the shoulder in there. Yeah. But yeah, like, dude, this thing's solid. Sweet. This thing's solid. So, PJ, what belt you rocking? Um, so I have a safe life. Safe life, right? Safe life. Safe life, yeah. yeah safe. safe life, not safe light. Safe life belt. Safe um, life this repair. Is, this safe is, life replacement. Yes. I haven't replaced this one yet. So, um, this is their their tack belt, I believe, not the duty one. Yeah. So it has mollies all around, which is nice. So you can, you know, stick your gear in there and make sure that it's in place. I haven't utilized any of it, so maybe I should have saved a little bit of money and, and gotten the, the duty version. Yeah, it's okay. But it's, it's nice to have, right? Just it in works. Case. Um, so, um, I'm rocking a Smith & Wesson MMP. Oh. Uh, for my duty pull, uh, duty weapon with an alien gear holster. Love this holster. Um, I've gone through a lot of different holsters to try to fit this particular gun. Um, nothing worked out for me. Right. Um, so having this is really a lifesaver, game changer. Love this thing. The, the mechanism, everything's big and bulky. I can get my fingers on it really, really easily. Even with gloves on too. Even with gloves on. Yeah, very, very easily um, manipulated. Manipulate um, I have two different handcuffs here. Uh, rock in the Peerless lightweight handcuffs with uh, APS, I believe. ASP. Oh, the ASP. ASP. The, yep. the ASP. Yep, yep, yep. yep, that's what it is. Um, 
never had any issues with it. They are a little bit small um, for the bigger guys. Yep. So I uh, have to deal with that, but I at least have two handcuffs, so I can always link them for, for bigger guys or people with injuries and whatnot. Yeah, you should be good to do with that, yeah. yeah. Um, I have a little handcuff pouch that I use as an AR mag holster. So just utilizing whatever I got. Uh, no, don't have to go buy anything super expensive, and I am rocking a 20 rounder. Um, I used to carry a double mag pouch on the front. Wasn't really a big fan of these canted ones, um, but after like trying it out yep. and moving things around, I found that it was super effective. So yep. I switched to it. So yeah, when you when you bend forward, yeah, like little it, things like that, it clears the. When I'm sitting, yeah, yeah, it, does, it, it, it doesn't dig into my stomach. So, way better, absolutely. Especially when I got these like mag extensions, they became a problem. Yep. So running regular. Max, no problem. When I when I went to these, I had to go with the canted. Yeah. Um, little key ring for my vehicle keys, and then I'm rocking the Taser Seven. Taser Seven on a Safari Land holster. Safari Land holster. Anything you would change? Um, you know what? I mean, I, I I like the belt set up the way it is. I like how rigid it is. My old belt, I had some issues with things sagging. Yep. Um, and I, I used to wear keepers, so I went away from that and went with a complete vel velcro system. And I'm I'm a big believer of the system. Um, I know people are a little bit hesitant because you know, like old school guys, they they want to do the belt keepers. They, they want to do belt keepers. They're afraid that the belt's gonna get ripped off from them. But Ugh. I mean, like these big heavy duty buckles and the velcro system, I've, I've never had any issues. So uh, I'm rocking a defense mechanisms belt. So um, full transparency, they sent this one to me. I think they sent this one to me and I bought a second one. So they sent this to me um, when they were still being, I think, tested. And so far, I, at first I was like, I didn't like it. But then I started using it more and I'm like, I started to, I started to pick up what they're putting down, if that makes any sense. So what I like about the belt, first thing I want is going to talk about the belt in its entirety. What I like about the belt is the, there's not molly everywhere, right? So it's very slick. Mm -hmm. So it's a very slick design on the exterior and it's very skinny. Yeah. So it's awesome. For that reason alone, it's great. Um, if you look right in the inside on the Velcro, that's where your molly's at. Okay. So that's where the molly sits at. So your stuff gets weaved on on the inside. So super cool in that aspect. Mm -hmm. So everything stays relatively low profile, which is my biggest thing. So the, the belt's been rigid. It has the capability to hold itself up, right? It doesn't flex. I mean, it, obviously it's a super, uh, super skinny, like carbon fiber lined. Mm -hmm. So yeah, will it flex a little bit? Yes, but for the most part, it holds the belt up and it's not concaving on itself, which is what I want. Mm -hmm. So left to right here. So uh, depending on which gun I'm carrying, because right now there's three guns that I cycle between. So I, I cycle between the Staccato. So I have the Staccato 2011 in a modified ra uh, rapid force holster. I have the Glock 34 Gen 5. And then I have a Glock 47 frame with a Glock 19 slide with a Parker Mountain Machine compensator. A, and all the accessories are exactly the same on all three guns. Aimpoint Acro P2s and then Surefire X300B or A models. Mm -hmm. um, and then with all three guns, the internals are completely stock, obviously, for a duty gun. Yeah. So depending on what I have here, I have the Guardian uh, Warrior Solutions little uh, clip here for the Molly attachments and stuff like that. And I'm either rocking a T-Rex Arms Mars Carrier or I forgot what the other brand was for my Staccato. Um, super, super chill, like honestly, the T-Rex Mars carriers have not failed me to this day. So I've been running these very nice. The cant is very solid on them. And then you can see how hard that one is to pull out. That's what I have it set for duty, right. for retention purposes for duty wise. So okay. that thing is set pretty nice and nice and sturdy. Um, I could cant more, cant less, depending on what I wanted to do. That is awesome. I have a modified uh, Safari Land holster in the rapid, like the alien gear, like mount mm -hmm. QD thingy in here. Just drill the third hole. Yeah. So I have that capability to do that as well. Uh, Ridgeline Defense with their drop, um, their drop mount, super solid. I love what they have here. Um, the benefits of having, well, first of all, the canted and this drop line mount is that when you wear the kit that you're on your upper portion or your upper torso, your the, your mags are no longer touching your vest. Okay. Because uh, I've seen sometimes where officers will like wear a rifle mag like from another company or whatever, or just like a straight line mount, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the vest can go over the magazine. Gotcha. And then that's a thing where like it, the mag gets mm -hmm. kind of confusing to get to. I don't know. This is it's, I've seen a couple things, right? Mm -hmm. This has been awesome. So it, so you could see where it kind of sits parallel. If I didn't have this little mag pull on there, like it would sit per, practically 
practically parallel to the uh, to the top of the belt. Nice. So it's a lot easier to grab. Okay. It's different though. You got to get some reps in. You got to get some training in on that to grab that magazine. Um, on the back here, I got some stuff from Thyrum. So Thyrum, it's a spare holder for some batteries. Plenty of times I've been out um, working and we're tracking the suspect in the woods or something like that, yeah. and the, the flashlights die. Yeah. So especially on my handheld. So I love having a spare um, spare battery for that thing if need be. I mean. I've had to switch batteries multiple times, so it works out pretty well. Obviously, rapid force mm -hmm. dual holster. Um, this one I'm trying different. This is also from Defense Mechanisms. This is a little tourniquet holder that they made specifically for Safari Land holsters. So I just drilled the third hole in the bottom, and I made it work for this so I can have a tourniquet readily available, nice and streamlined. It's connected to the holster body itself um, with elastic. Pretty good so far. And then, like I told you, my duty pistol earlier. And then right here the asp holder for the asp cuffs. I love the asp cuffs because they are very quick to get on. Mm -hmm. um, this holder has been having problem in it, problems in and of itself. Um, and mainly is it, it's a training thing, right? So when we go out to train, that's when I notice these cuffs like to fall out. Yeah. Or I'm doing some dumb shit and I bump against the table that gets pushed down. Next thing you know, my cuffs are falling out. Mm -hmm. So that's a problem in and of itself. Will I continue to run this? Maybe. I, know, I, I think over the next couple months, we'll kind of play with it and see what, yeah. we're, see what we're gonna play with and see what we're gonna change up. But so far, so good. Also, right. keep a spare handcuff key behind this thing, which is I think is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, so if I had to change anything on this right now, no, because I probably would have bought it already. <laughs> yeah, I know for sure. Yeah, so I don't think I would change anything right now. As far as what it looks like, it seems like we're all rocking a very similar system. Oh, do we? That orientation. 100%. Right? Handcuffs in the front, mags right here. I mean, it works, right? Yeah. So, taser for the support hand draw. Big fan of that. Mm -hmm. um, Rifle mag off the back left corner, yeah. like not a big deal. Yeah. Handcuffs on the front so we can reach it with both hands. Mm -hmm. Magazine up in the front as well too. Two, yeah. We have two sources of ammo, one on the vest, one on the belt. Yeah. Pretty consistent. The only difference is like I carry a, you carry another, you carry one set of handcuffs on your belt mm -hmm. and I carry extra battery. Yeah. That's literally the only difference. Other than that, it's funny how we never talked about this, but we have literally right. the belt set up yeah. exactly the same. <laughs> I love that. Mm -hmm. Forgot to talk about this little thing before we kind of skip to the next part. Um, key back, Amazon. So this thing sits right there. I loop it into my belt right before work. It sits right there. It's awesome. I could pull the keys for key fobs and stuff like that. And extra pair of handcuff keys and extra pair of vehicle keys as well. People have a problem with this. What I do to solve that problem? Well, it's on my belt. I kind of get some tension and I shove this part into my pants. Mm -hmm. And then if I need to make a stealth approach to a house or whatever, then you don't hear the keys anymore. Yeah. But this is something that I carry on my patrol belt. Awesome investment. I love this thing. I just take it out of my key ring and throw it in my pocket. Yeah, that Done. works. <clears throat> Night vision and helmets. Yeah. Oh, man. So PJ and I went with the same helmet. Uh, courtesy, or not courtesy, because we paid for it, but right. <laughs> um, Kosher Surplus had a sale. They had some like government runoffs or whatever of the revision Caymans. So we bought the helmets. I got a grade A Ranger Green and Large. Mm -hmm. You got a grade A um, what, Coyote Tan. Earth. Yeah, Flat Dark Earth. And <clears throat> the medium. Yeah. Helmets are very light. I. It's like, I don't know, the M Tech and this helmet, they feel like almost the same, but for some reason I. F I feel like this one's a little bit lighter than my M-Tech. I'm not sure. Yeah. So I made the switch over mm. and man, this thing has been solid. This helmet's super cool. Um, if you want to know more about the helmet, uh, this obviously isn't a review on the helmet. We're just going to talk about what's on our helmet, how we've been using it for work and X, Y, and Z. So I'll let PJ go ahead and go first. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I have some pretty limited knowledge and experience with nods and helmet, even with my time in the military. Uh, we just, we didn't get to use them much because I was right. in the guard. Um, but <clears throat> Like using the duels, uh, game changer. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. Um, just the capability and the the type of um, sight picture and information you can gather with these, definitely game changer. And I, I love having them. Um, the system on the helmet really really nice. Got this little ratcheting system. Um, super lightweight and the ear pro that I have them. This, this is from Ear Armor. Ear Armor, yep. Yeah, and they work really well. They have comms capability and they take an ambient sound and amplifies it just yep. like your normal uh, Peltors. It's literally all you need. So yeah, just a really, really cheap version of the Peltors. Yeah, so they, they work for me. Anything you would change? Um, I mean, maybe I'll get the Peltors in the, in the future. In the future. Because um, I've been having some issues as far as like getting the comms to work. I can hear transmission, but I have a hard I time. I think, yeah, we're going to have to swap some stuff around and figure that out. And that's a that's a problem that we're going to have to work on our own. Yeah. And we'll obviously come with you guys with a solution. Mm -hmm. Other than that, nothing else you change? 
Um, no, man. I, I think everything's pretty good here. I might add some um, IR capability, like IR signaling over yeah. here, just because we, we work with, with drones and whatnot. Yep. Um, and if we're going to be walking around, it'd be nice to be able to spot each other. Absolutely. So pretty much what uh, I pretty much have the same thing, obviously, plus a bunch of extra doohickeys. So rocking the Night Vision Network BNVDs, uh, these are the ultralight uh, white FOSS. These nods have been such a huge force multiplier for patrol. Um, it's been amazing utilizing night vision and the things that we've been able to learn about night vision, um, the capability it gives us for identifying suspects in the woods, yeah. um, a, a huge increase in officer safety and not being, uh, not having to illuminate ourselves and our partners with white light. Um, we have our own SOPs that we've kind of been kind of establishing on patrol for dog tracks and for whatever services that we're conducting where we could utilize night vision because when in doubt we pull it out. Right. To, yeah. yeah. I like that. <laughs> we're gonna put that on a patch. Yeah. Yeah. When in doubt we right pull over it, here. Right yeah. On right. Right on top. So. That would not be good. We cannot use those on no. work. We can't use that for work. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, I have these uh, some stuff from Unity. This is a Viz uh, blue light, so I can do strobe or solid lights. Then I have the uh, Hellstar. IR stuff here in the back, so if we're working with planes or drones, they could see us. Mm -hmm. um, then I have white light IR capabilities as well too with the stream light. This thing is super cool. Um, this one, I could either loop it on, I could attach that to your arc rail, oh, cool. or I could just go, it could go straight off to Velcro on the helmet. Nice. And it's not expensive either. I think okay. this was like sub 150 bucks. I might look so at that. Wasn't too bad at all. Um, obviously IR patch, um, badge number in the back. Mm -hmm. And then here I have Peltors as well. Um, the helmet is honestly, I didn't expect it to be so comfortable. So probably one of the most comfortable helmets I've ever worn. Uh, literally the, the, the system here, you guys could see this BOA. This BOA system, when you tighten it, it kind of like pulls the whole thing tight rather than the Team Wendy that kind of just tightens on the rear. Mm -hmm. So this has been super, super comfortable for us to wear. Um, and it, it just hugs your head, yeah. which has been awesome. Right. And like I was showing you guys earlier with the capabilities that I have with this, because, um, you know, as much as I would say that I'd, I'm going to have time to switch carriers, uh, part of the reason why that this, uh, the, uh, my green Ranger Green Carrier isn't here right now, because um, half the time I've only had to, the, the time to switch to it a handful of times compared to just screw it, I'll grab a helmet, I'll grab a rifle, and we're going to go. Um, again, that's a topic of discussion, that's a topic of debate. Um, we won't have that here right now, but one of the things I could do is just pull on this right here. I have this the little wrist strap or wrist bracelet thingy that I just pull on and then I could absolutely just plug my comms into this right here and then I have no problems with comms capabilities right yeah. there. If there's anything I would change on this, no, <laughs> I wouldn't. Otherwise, like I said, I would have bought it already. Right. Um, I'm very happy with what this, with the stuff that's providing. Mm -hmm. um, another asset or another capability that we do have, I have thermals in my Ranger Green kit that I that I have in the trunk of the car. I just unclip them if I need them. I throw them in a pocket and I run them that way. Maybe if I had a thermal bridge, that'd be kind of cool or a thermal overlay. Again, that's technology that I don't understand. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Dax from Night Vision Network probably can explain that to me better and tell me how much I would go in depth for, in depth for that one. So, <laughs> I mean, that's another topic of discussion. Um, and then the last thing we'll talk about, Rifolis. All right, so the Rifolis. Oh man, the patrol rifles. Yeah. Um, huge asset for us to have um, major capabilities, officer safety increase. Uh, you know, it, it provides a lot of information and this is a definitely a tool that if your agency isn't on this, they need to be on it. So PJ, what rifle are you running? And go through it. Yeah, that's what you got. So this guy started off as a Springfield Saint, um, but I ended up getting an Aero Precision Upper with a SLR rail. Yeah. Uh, this I think this is a 10 and a 10.7. Right. This is a 10.7 rail. Um, with a 11.5 uh, barrel with the Griffin dual op. Criterion barrel, yep. Yep, Criterion barrel, barrel um, with the, uh, the Griffin dual op 5. Dual op, that's a yeah. dual op 5, yeah. yeah. Uh, I am running a mod light, uh, weapon light with the uh, click on switch, the, uh, the mall yep. DA with the, uh, let's see, what is this? The Hollow Sun 403R. Pretty much like a clone of the the aim, aim point. point. Super um, solid. Optic. Works really well. The the, the dots are super crisp. Uh, I love this thing. It's on a uh, scalar work mount. The 1.9, right? The 1.93. Yeah, yeah 1.93, with the uh, radio. The Raptor, right? Yeah, the Raptor charging handle. Uh, ambidextrous. 
Um, and I used to run a law tactical folder on this thing. I, I went away from it just because I'm not on a motorcycle anymore. Yep. So I just throw in this in the patrol car. Didn't, didn't need the extra weight. So I, I got rid of that. And I'm running a uh, centrifuge uh, two-point sling. Yep. So the, the love centrifuge fling. Yeah. Oh baby, that thing is a game changer. So the adjustability and and the uh, the way that you, you stow, stow it, it. Yeah, just like don't have to deal with a bunch of different like elastic and rubber bands. Just keeping it really really clean. It comes out really really easily. Um, yeah, it's a it's a good setup. Anything you would change? Thing. Um, if I would change anything. I don't know. It's it's hard to say. I mean, it's it's set maybe up more multi cam black. Maybe more of that. Yeah. yeah. So and maybe like a like a magnifier, just because I've like from what I've seen, it's uh, it's capability with what we do. Like, yeah. You know, um, positively identifying targets and uh, reading license plate and getting information and stuff yep. like that. I think that's that's going to be the next move. But on that, it's a perfectly awesome. good working rifle. Okay, so let's see here. Right now, currently, I am testing. So uh, obviously, the base gun is going to be. Technically, it's a record rifle. The only thing that's not record on this is going to be the uh, the rail, just because right now Steve doesn't have any ten and a half inch rails available. Um, but I'm I'm tracking that he'll be having them very soon. I think in maybe June, and at the time of recording this, we're at the beginning of May. So yeah. hopefully next month I'll have the rail, so I'll be swapping that out. So this guy's here will be bye bye. But right now, currently playing with the uh, Huxworks Flow 556K. Awesome can. I like it a lot. Do I prefer my Griffin over this thing? Uh, yes, I will say it probably I do right now. Um, for a training can, um, for running this gun uh, in a training environment, man, after like 60 rounds, the can's already glowing. Um, it's for that reason alone it kind of sucks it's you can already see a bunch of melted plastic on the can whereas my dual lock 5 my dual locks uh, my dual lock 7 all my griffin cans there's no melted plastic on them or there's no residuals of anything melted because it, i don't i don't know how the cans work exactly but like the heat transfer on this thing um they get really hot really quickly so I shot those cans a lot more, and I don't know. It kind of, it's kind of telling, right? Where it's yeah. like those are the cans that've been shot so much more, mm -hmm. and no plastic on it. Here, I've only had this can for a couple months now, and there's already melted plastic all over the crap, all, all over the can. Yeah. So it's kind of like, eh. but it's, it's a great suppressor. Oh, it's a great can though. Yeah. The can works well. It gasses super. Like functionality wise, yeah. the can is amazing. Mm -hmm. I think it's hard to be beat for that for for right now. Yeah. Just but, got some issues. Yeah, it's got some small issues, but not a big deal. As you can see here, the way we kind of set up our rifles, uh, minimal uh, pressure switches. I don't like if I don't have to have pressure switches, I won't. I was playing with some other stuff a while back ago, but I always find myself going back to the setup. If I create a fire and grip, I can have access to both buttons on the mall and then access to the white light here offset so that's super cool um again it's i don't like to have the switches if i don't need them yeah no it made it made sense if you had different uh, laser systems yeah like i was running the d-ball for a little bit yeah it was a little cumbersome to reach up and hit that button so i i ran a laser switch yep um but with with the mall everything just looked, like you said sits perfectly Ergonomic right, yeah, right yeah. where my my firing grip is yep. and i can just get to all the buttons perfectly fine so no need for switches that can rip and break yep. so. i know a lot of guys like to do the mall under or the light underneath the the mall mm -hmm. i did that literally i just swapped back to this like last month yeah um but there's no problem with that it's just this is the way i prefer to run it this is my own little thing t-rex arms light bar mod light beat myers mall obviously um centrifuge 2.0 sling on multicam black of course mm -hmm. you gotta run the multicam black yeah ranger wraps over everything that could be wrapped i just gotta wrap these two and we'll be good um ranger wraps these guys are awesome they make a great product it's one of those things that you didn't know you needed it's until you need it. it's it's until you need it yeah. like again what weapon lights a wrap with them uh it's like a cool little just a cool guy thing you could do man. yeah I, I don't know i love the multicam black colors i think it's really cool um aim point duty rds on a scale of 23 it's funny how many times people ask about this setup um even though like i've addressed it in like so many videos so scalar works 193 on a duty rds from aim point sits at about the same height as a unity would so with the unity it, it fits just fine. So that's just to let you guys know. Um, here, obviously, the Magpul dust cover, another amazing addition. Um, this thing is super cool. I didn't know they existed. Uh, the Magpul dust covers, they attach within like two seconds. I can undo this right now. Oh, cool. Yeah, so all I have to do is that, and then I put it on. Dude, lean with it, rock with it. 
and you're in. Yeah, it's super cool. It's I don't know. Thing. That's like, yeah. it's, I think that's a super cool. Mm -hmm. um, the bootleg systems uh, bolt carrier group. This thing is super solid. Love this thing to death. It makes the guns function amazing. Control some of the gas coming in and out of the gun. Yeah. Um, obviously, Radian Raptor SD charging handle. Can't beat that at all. Uh, what else is important on here? Um, obviously, Magpul stock. Can't beat the Magpul uh, furniture and accessories. Magpul grip on the front as well. Uh, and then the magnifier. Oh man, the Vortex magnifier, um, the Unity mount. The magnifiers have been adding another capability for sure. Um, just recently, we had an incident. It was a amongst our short high risk stop where it's like the car is at an awkward distance from us. We got photonic barriers, so we're fighting against white light that's from the front of the vehicle. Um, something as super simple as putting white back, white light back, obviously defeating that photonic barrier, and then being able to just pick up the magnifier and read the plate. Yeah. Um, that was something huge for us. Um, another capability for you guys is you could actually, if you guys haven't, don't know this, I'm pretty sure the information's already out there, but I figured this out while I was at sniper school and I've been applying this at work. Under night vision, I can absolutely look through the magnifier turn on my illuminator and I could read plates at distances with this. So super cool asset, super cool capability for PID. Um, I don't, I don't, I've never held somebody at gunpoint with this. It's always been like that. But again, this is another capability that we have right. that has a potential of reducing liability and getting the officers more information. So magnifiers and magnified optics definitely do have their place. Depending on where you work, um, the guys in the city would probably tell me to go pound sand, which I get. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, so far, this has been a huge asset for us. Right. Um, and I'm coming from a big agency working in, in the city. And night vision and laser, IR, stuff like that was never really anything that we would consider. Yeah. Um, and I never thought I would be using this type of equipment, but being out here in smaller areas where there's not a lot of city lights, yep. uh, not, not a lot of street lights, um, this definitely is a force multiplier, like you said, increased officer safety. Oh, dude, it's amazing. And uh, information gathering. So it's just been, been nothing but good experiences with it. Um, this is just a, a video we decided to make. I, we, we get a lot of questions about like, hey, what gear are we running, how we're running it, and how we're using it and stuff like that. Um, just wanted to kind of at least dulge into this with you guys. Um, be transparent in terms of like, hey, what are we using? How are we going to be applying it? This may apply to certain ways and mentalities you guys set up your gear. So this could definitely help you guys, even if you're not on patrol, if you're security, if you're a civilian, if you're in the military. Uh, again, this, this gear gets worn by us four times four times a week yeah. for longer than 10 hours most of the time. And um, so far, we have no complaints. Everything's set up pretty much the way we want, but who knows? It's probably gonna change within the next like week or two. Yeah, Again, things are always changing. Things are always coming changing. Off, coming on, yeah. Yep, so it's always happening. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thanks for watching the video. Thank you for your continued support. Remember, be a dude, don't be a dick, take care. Remember, PJ loves you.